And uh, adolescence is defined by LIDS, uh, is the time between puberty and physical maturity. It's also a transition from childhood and to adult responsibilities and self-sufficiency. Now, so this is the reason why adolescence, the period of adolescence is now getting longer and longer because of this last, this third point, to transition to adult responsibilities and self-sufficiency. Uh, used to be, uh, uh, by the time somebody was in their late teens, they were, they were often very self-sufficient. Uh, they were married, they had their own farm, uh, they were working uh, their way and paying their way, and uh, how many people does that apply to in today's society? Not too many, okay? And uh, marriage is later and later, careers are starting later and later, and uh, so there's this long transition time uh, that we now call uh, adolescence. It's a modern label, it's something that people didn't even have before. And uh, so now there's this long period of time, and it's getting longer and longer as far as, um, you know, I mean, and, and people back then married very young. Uh, it was just assumed. Now you're told don't marry young, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, we, we get all upset about all this adolescent stuff, and then we tell you to extend the adolescence, you know? <laughs> and uh, so it's kind of like, you're almost in this no-win zone here, and uh, but essentially, the the to go to the simplicity of this aspect, this is basically a time of change, uh, physical change, social change, uh, assumption of responsibility, economic changes are typically tied to adolescence, and uh, you know it's it's pretty obvious to most people uh, that a 12-year-old is still a child. Although I'm beginning to wonder, it seems like kids are in some ways growing up much more, which incidentally, uh, puberty is getting younger and younger. And uh, so, again, not only is the top end of adolescence getting older, the lower end of adolescence is getting younger. And uh, it's probably, uh, I should probably even lower this age to talk about 12 year old as a child, but basically you see in four years difference, there's a big difference between a 12 year old and a 16 year old, okay? And uh, physical development, reproductive ability, which again, <coughs> getting younger and younger, so 12 might be actually a little too old for this illustration here. And a desire for independence. Most 12 year olds, most, uh, are pretty content to be under mom and dad. 16 year olds are one of the, you know, I want to make my own decisions um, kind of thing. And uh, these are often viewed as the most difficult years of, of a human being's life. What do you think of that? I've always said that junior high years were about the toughest years of anybody's life. I'd say probably now you ought to say middle school, you know, junior high, middle school years. What do you think? I've had people say, nah. Yeah, some of you say yes. Um, quite often it is because it's a time when people are trying to figure out who in the world they are. They're having all these changes and uh, they're moving from dependency to independency and, and it's all kind of weird. <laughs> they're moving from just hanging out with their f friends uh, and uh, mostly uh, same gender friends, but not always, but all of a sudden now it's moving into, it's getting a little bit more complicated now. And, uh, you know, these uh, uh, guys and gals getting together, all of a sudden it's, it's the uh, ante is up. This is more serious. This is something where my emotions are getting involved, etc. And uh, it becomes difficult. Parents can help with this transition by trying to be, to be welcoming to their child's uh, confusion, sometimes what appears to be hostility, frustration, just be open. Just listen without being confrontational. If a parent confronts everything uh, in an antagonistic way, there's going to be a lot of confrontation in a lot of homes. Not all, but a lot of them. Uh, and because uh, some go through tougher transitions than others. 
But the key is to make it safe for the adolescent to be able to talk to somebody, and why not be talking to mom and dad? You're going to probably be talking to somebody. And uh, teach them to make independent decisions. Now, a lot of parents don't want their children to make decisions. I understand that. I'm a paranoid parent, okay? You become paranoid as soon as you become a parent, you know? And uh, you have to protect these your sons and daughters at any cost, and therefore, I know what's best for them, right? If you don't believe it, ask me. <laughs> if you doubt me, ask them, okay? Josh. Um, going back to being open and talking to your children and your children being able to talk to you, this may be kind of thin ice, but um, I knew families that their children they sent to um, like psychologists and things like that. And I always thought it was kind of weird as a kid because, I mean, why would I want to go and talk to someone I didn't know and my parents were there and I didn't know. And they were, I mean, they were a Christian family and they went to a, you know, a Christian place, but I didn't know. I always thought that was kind of weird. I didn't know what you wanted. Well, it depends. I mean, there are some needs that a psychologist would probably be good to, to use, but often, Unfortunately, the tension in the home is such because when, a, when a, a child starts questioning the core values or of a family, the traditions of a family, it's threatening. I mean, I know it's like you want to just say, "Stop it!" You know, I told you the truth. Swallow it and accept it. You know, I mean, hey. And um, but most adolescents don't do that. They've got to work through that questioning period. I think it's normal development. And so too often in families, when that starts, then they start reacting against each other out of fear. More than hostility, it usually starts out as fear. And uh, now it can become hostility. But uh, then it gets worse and worse. And once the emotions get deep in this thing, it's very <laughs> difficult to fix it without an intervention of someone else. But ideally, yes parents to try to do this. Now, if yours didn't do this well, they're probably in the majority. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's tough. And uh, maybe not the majority. I hope that's not true. But there's a lot of parents that struggle with this. And it's not because they're against the kid. It's just they don't know what to do with this uh, kid that they've been so good to and taught all the right things, and now they're questioning. And, uh, and it's, it's threatening. Um, this is a time of major growth spurt, uh, ages 10 to 14. Uh, an adolescent usually uh, gains about 15 to 55 pounds and 2 to 10 inches. This is when mom and dad are saying, I have to buy new clothes every week. You know, they just outgrow everything. And I can't afford to feed them. You know, <laughs> it's just, you know I come in and the refrigerator's empty every night. You know, what happened to the food? You know, I just had a snack. You know? And uh, so <laughs> it's a big change. Uh, there's marked social behavior. Uh, they change from basically hanging out with the same gender to starting to like the opposite gender. That's pretty normal and nice. Confusing sometimes, but uh, nice. And uh, they, uh, when they do this, it starts rearranging social groups and friendships, and it can become unsettling, especially if somebody's friends start this process pr before they do. So there's a lot of social confusion that goes with this. And, uh, and the guys start to realize that girls aren't so bad after all. And maybe vice versa. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, there's cognitive changes. Uh, they develop what Piaget talked about, the formal operational period, uh, where logical deduction and, and abstract reasoning, they're able to, to sort through things that aren't, aren't just cut and dried. Um, and uh, you know, now in the early part, they, they're pretty inflexible and idealistic. Uh, early adolescence, everything's just kind of, this is the way it is, I know, don't question me. That's why, another reason why parents and children during this time can have conflict. Uh, the kids know more than the parents do at this time. At least they're pretty confident that they do. And uh, so don't tell me that this is wrong because I've already got it figured out, you know. And they're very idealistic. Uh, they, they, adolescent, and this is not a bad quality, it's just, 
idealism isn't realism <laughs> all the time. And uh, it's like everything's got to be this, this great uh, process and everything's got to just line up just right. Uh, that's why a lot of adolescents get into social campaigns and things, because the idealism. Plus, they're not realistic in the sense that nothing can happen to them. I mean, adolescents can do some of the most dangerous, high-risk things, uh, whether it's uh, physical dangers, uh, taking sexual risk, all kinds of things that can happen, because it's not going to happen to me. Yes? Is one of the reasons they're like that because becoming independent is a form of risk? So by not recognizing risk well, it, it helps them to actually become more dependent? independent of their parents? I don't know for sure, but that's a logical thought, the idea that becoming independent is a risk in itself, so this kind of helps with that process. I, logically, it seems right. Good thing. Uh, uh, Piaget called this the second egocentric state, because uh, early adolescents, I mean, they're really stuck on themselves. <laughs> they really are. And, uh, you know, it's kind of all about me this age. Uh, I've already mentioned they start thinking abstractly, they become concerned about social and political and philosophical issues, they start thinking long term, setting goals, comparing themselves to their peers. Uh, you know, I think that's starting younger and younger now. I think this peer pressure is not, it doesn't even wait for adolescence now. I think these notes might need to be changed. Uh, our society is imposing pressure on children now, fashion pressure, behavior pressure, um, sexualizing children. I mean, this is really happening. This isn't some uh, fanatical preacher talking. It's really happening. And uh, it's not just stuff you read about in Christian writings. Uh, even some of the <coughs> secular writers are getting concerned about it. And uh, so I think it's beginning to, to happen much earlier than, than adolescence. Uh, emotional changes, insecurity, that's one of the reasons why it's a tough time during the early adolescence. Identity crisis, who am I? How do I fit in? Are people going to value me? Is anybody going to want to be my friend? Is anybody going to want to be my boyfriend or girlfriend? You know, all of this stuff. Uh, can I play ball as good as the next guy or gal? Or can I do this, you know, as well as them? You're measuring yourself constantly by others. That's one reason, that and other reasons are why depression is a very serious problem in adolescence. And uh, uh, sometimes it's the conflict with the parents, uh, sometimes it's the comparison with other people and, and they don't feel like they compare well, uh, the social uh, maladjustment, they just don't fit in. Maybe the group they used to run with, they, they don't fit in with them anymore because they've kind of changed their social uh, alignment. Um, and adolescent depression is very different than adult depression. And this is something a lot of people don't realize. Uh, you know, adults, it's kind of typical for them just to shut down. Depression just kind of stops an adult. You know, and, and the typical, the, what you typically think of as, as depression. You know, I don't have any interest in anything anymore. I don't want to do anything. I just want to lay around and sleep and uh, that kind of thing. Feelings of despair. Well, adolescents don't typically just lay around and do nothing. They get uh, sometimes very hyper. Uh, sometimes a, a, an adolescent that is just wildly active may be depressed. And, and uh, if you think in terms of depression like adults, uh, you're missing it. That rebellious frustration that is shown, uh, hostility, uh, a lot of guilt feelings, uh, that's typical of adolescent depression. 